Uh, I did want to ask you, and we kind of touched on this uh, a little bit uh, when talking about the uh, the Panthers game. Uh, I know you had multiple DUIs uh, during your time in Kansas City, uh, and I know you, I believe you had a four-game suspension uh, from the NFL uh, for those incidents. Um, can you talk about what that experience was like for you and what the biggest learning lesson was and, and how have you rebounded from those incidents? So going through all that, like I had no idea um, what was entailed with this NFL experience. And, and you know, being a, a kid on the high school team that, you know, thought he was pretty decent and then going to college and, and, and being, you know, on a really good team um, and still trying to find your way. Uh, and all of a sudden you get to Kansas City. And the first couple of years I was in Kansas City, like, I, you know, I had people excited that I was there, but I wasn't a starter then. And all of a sudden, you know, I became a starter. Um, you know, people began to critique and criticize uh, much of what you did. And heck, you know, I can go out and have a, a great game and give up one play in the game. And that entire write up in the newspaper on the news is going to be like, you know, he did, he got burned. And so uh, mentally, there was years to where I, I wish I, I wasn't on a pro team. And, you know, I, I found myself just out partying, you know, just doing whatever just to avoid whomever and whatever um, to keep my mind away from a lot of that criticism. So, um, you know, it, it's it, still today, I think, uh, we had with the podcast that I do now with Jason yeah. Dunn and Marcus. Yeah, I think we had a post, and uh, one of the guys had a comment on it. And I uh, I don't remember exactly how he worried, but it was something to the point of like how how bad I sucked with the Chiefs. You know that 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 you know, it, as old as it is, and you know it being just words um, posted, it still affects you a little. Um, to know that you had to deal with it then and you still have to deal with it now. Well, let me, and I don't mean to cut you off, but you know, I mean, there are a lot of shitty comments like that online, but here's a better question. Like how many of those guys will say it to your face? True. And they won't. None probably will, but I can't sit back and say that people don't read it, uh, especially athletes. You know, yeah. there's a lot of talk about, you know, I'm pretty sure LeBron, is dealing with it too because you know he's up there with considered one of the best greatest of all time and you know there's a lot of great talk about him but then there's also a lot of bad talk and as much as you say that you don't read it or acknowledge it it still messes with you you know Kevin Durant has proven that he's created a, you know a false page to go back and try to argue with people which I wouldn't do I, and I don't argue with people over social media but you know words can hurt um, you know, and a lot of people don't understand that. And when you have, especially uh, if you're a father and you're raising kids and you want them to be yeah. uh, a professional athlete, and someday, you know, and you sit here and you, you're typing all this stuff about how you feel about you, your opinions about a person. And yet, you know, what if your kid is there one day and they got to deal with the same thing? So uh, some of it, you know, I can overlook it, man. Some of it is just, you know, it touches on. So, well, you know what's funny? A lot of times, you know, I mean, people will say all these things, and like I said, I mean, they're they're never going to say it to your face. And the other thing, other thing is like, they're, they're putting the time and effort to say those kinds of things. And here's the worst part. And listen, I mean, you obviously have a bigger following than I do, but I know some people they'll they've got nothing better to do, so they'll they'll make a comment and. My problem was in, with social media is I used to respond to everybody, even the trolls, just to try to find some common ground, but that never works. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, I just learned, you know, ignoring them or blocking them is just way better because all they want is a rise out of you. That's all they want because, you know, they've got nothing better to do. Like, that's the way I look at it. And, and look, I don't doubt what you're saying when you say words hurt. Yeah, of course. I mean, when you say something shitty, of course, it's going to bother them, but you know, these are the same people who they, they would love to trade spots with you at the end of the day. You, you know, you weren't the best cornerback and, and you weren't on the best defense, but I mean, they would love to trade places with you. I mean, you got to play in the NFL. So uh, yeah, they're always for every 
hater or shitty person out there. There are, there are always a hundred people who appreciate what you did too. Yeah. And you know, I, I, I try to follow, especially with Twitter. Um, I follow most of the guys or women um, that have a picture up. So I know this is a real person. <laughs> I know that there's a lot of fake accounts that get on just for that reason, just so they can, you know, criticize uh, a person or, or start up some sort of controversy. So, uh, and I don't follow those accounts. Uh, but for the most part, if somebody looks like they have a, 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 a picture of themselves and it might be a real account, I follow back because I want to interact with them. If they got a question, I want to answer. I'm, you know, I, I, I tend to post. Uh, during sporting events and it's good to hear feedback from people uh, and, and kind of get a little conversation heck I've developed some friendships through this stuff um, the last thing I wanted to touch on uh, when, when talking about you know the incidents you dealt with uh, you know it, when you look at back at recent Chiefs history you, you look at guys like Larry Johnson he got into some big trouble a couple of times off the field you look at Kareem Hunt who's a former chief now but I mean one of the incidents that he was involved in is one of the most talked about incidents that happened off the field. Uh, what is your advice for players that are uh, maybe younger players in the NFL or, 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 or people who want to play in the NFL and want to maintain that level head and, and stay out of trouble? What is your advice to those guys? For one, take it very serious. Um, you know, when you're put on a pedestal, you put the, I mean, it, there's a really small room for, for, for failure. And, you know, we're not perfect. You know, we're going to make mistakes, but we can kind of, you know, it doesn't have to be a big mistake. You know, um, sometimes people are provoked. And when you're provoked, you know, there might be a situation that happened with Kareem Hunt. Um, and it's hard to not respond. Fortunately, I wasn't in one of those situations where uh, I've had to, you know, be physical with someone and, 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 and have that caught on tape or the situation with Larry Johnson. Um, so I can't speak on everybody's situation, but you have to understand, like, when you're, when, when you're on those teams, like, yeah, you're under a spotlight. There's not a lot that you can do that won't get out. You know, you can't even you know, rarely post something and try to take it back because once you hit that send button, it's gone. You know, it's pretty much out there to the world for the world to see. Uh, and as far as like incidents, if you can, um, you know, heck, I, especially when I did the coaching in Nebraska, the one thing I would tell the guys that were uh, trying to pursue the NFL career is like, if you have a girlfriend, stay with her, you know, you know, don't get out there and start chasing the women. Stay out of, bars are fun. Uh, always take somebody with you. You got enough money to afford cabs, take a cab. Nowadays, Uber is, you know, right there at the touch of a button in your hand. So um, do whatever is, is easiest for you uh, to keep your life out of the media and especially social media. Uh, 